Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about inspiration for Stephen King's It. Um, that I want to have a discussion about this because the person that I reread uh, a certain novel with, we'll get to that in a minute, um, they were very adamant, uh, hi Billy, um, they were very adamant that this could not possibly be the case, that Stephen King obviously came up with all of these ideas on his own way before he ever wrote the book, but I feel, even as a super Stephen King fanboy, I feel that there are certain elements that just cannot be explained away by, you know, just simple coincidence. So today, we are comparing and contrasting Dean Koontz's, yes, Dean Koontz's Phantoms with Stephen King's It. You have a, <laughs> you right off the bat, you got a size difference. I'm using Sarah Frost's uh, gift to me this time. This isn't the one that, uh, that Brooksy sent me. But, so this is a 1,300 page novel, at least this version is. And Dean Koontz's paperback is right at 400, 420 uh, pages. But we're going to jump in. You won't be seeing much of this one. Um, first off, because it's heavy and I got weak wrists. Sure, that's why. Um, but uh, the, we're going to be talking about phantoms today. So uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to title this because uh, I want to make a series of this, especially on the run-up to uh, the to It Chapter 2. No, I have not watched the trailer. No, I am not going to watch the trailer. I'm going to go into the film completely blind, unlike... Uh, no, not unlike, like I was able to with the first one, like I was unable to do with uh, Pet Cemetery. While I love this community, you guys are hella spoilery. <laughs> I have every single thing, I can't mute the word it on YouTube or else it would probably mute every single comment. But if I could, but I am very, very uh, particular about which uh, comments I read if it has it in it and has it Stephen King themed. Anyways. So jumping into the actual comparison, here's some stuff that I thought couldn't have been a coincidence. Well, actually, first, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. How do I even know that uh, Stephen King read Dean Koontz? Well, here on the, uh, the quote page, and it's not a generic quote, it's the second one, it's by Stephen King. Um, it's not even a generic quote like Dean Koontz is a master of masturbating or something. <laughs> know why that came out like that, but uh, anyways, uh, so the quote is from Stephen King, Phantoms, so he names the book, Phantoms is gruesome and unrelenting. It has atmosphere, character, and story. I couldn't let it alone until I was done. It's well realized, intelligent, and humane. Um, there's also a quote that someone sent me because they just could not believe that uh, Stephen King could have anything to do with Dean Koontz where uh, Stephen King said that sometimes Dean Koontz is really awful. Um, now, that's not to say that he's always awful. At some point in time, either, you know, he was forced to give a blurb, which I sometimes think is the case. It's like, hey, you want to play nice with this person. Uh, but this is a really fantastic novel. So do I believe that King read it and liked it? Hell yeah, I do. Um, I believe that. I believe every inch of that because I feel the same way about this book. This book's fantastic. Um, I could do without one of the subplots, but anyways... Um, so, the, right off the bat, the creature, monster, entity in Phantoms, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to have to say it, there's going to be spoilers throughout for both it and Phantoms, so if you haven't read both books, I suggest you GTFO. Um, so, right off the bat, the monster creature, the sentient petroleum jelly uh, from Phantoms, I know that sounds goofy, it's much better than it sounds, uh, it is called It. Um, throughout the book until they changed the name to Shape Changer. Uh, some people call it Satan. Um, there's a lot of... A, anyways, but it's a sewer underground dwelling entity named It. So, obvious, right? Uh, maybe not so obvious, and this is one of those things that me and Dealey went uh, back and forth with quite a bit. Uh, was the Fletcher Kale Henry Bowers. Uh, I, I guess at this point in time, I was seeing so many allusions to it that maybe I forced this one, but I'll let you guys decide. I do want to have a discussion whether or not you think Stephen King got ideas for it 
with this book. This book was published first, by the way, 1983, at least, well, not this version. This is a variant from 1996 where he updated the pop culture references to, like, the OJ trial and whatnot. But uh, the original version of this book in hardcover came out in 1983, and Stephen King's It didn't come out until 1986. Um, so he had plenty of, times, plenty of time to add things and subtract things and whatnot, because King wrote It, if we're to believe the, uh, the note at the end of It, between 1981 and 1985, and then it was published in 86. But where I'm, what I'm getting at is the Fletcher Kale and the Henry Bowers connection, I feel. Um, you both have this, uh, this crazy person who is locked up and is summoned from lockup to go do the monster's bidding, um, which is strange. There's a couple things in Phantoms that do not feel right, uh, first off, the creature's not supernatural, other than the fact the way it communicates. Somehow it is able to use the phone, somehow it is able to use computers, somehow it is able to reach Fletcher Kale while he's in jail, and he's called toward it. Um, other than that, the creature from Phantoms isn't supernatural at all. It doesn't have supernatural powers. Um, it travels through the sewers, um, and it kills, it has to be in the same area where people are to kill. It cannot... Otherwise, other than, you know, toying with people, it cannot uh, control them in any way, shape, or form, but yet it called to this Kale character. Now, in It, it's more believable because Penny, well, It, the entity known as It, um, who is also Pennywise, it's not, the creature isn't Pennywise. Pennywise the clown is the shape that it takes to scare children. Much like the spider at the end, which there's a lot of spiders Throughout this book, especially a gigantic spider that's the size of a, what was it, a small car? I, I can't remember. It was a, I, think, I believe it was the size of a small car. And in it, at the end of it, it gets trapped in the shape of a giant spider. But the Fletcher Kale Henry Bowers thing, am, am I reaching there? Let, let's say I am reaching. I'm going to take that one on the chin. I am reaching a bit with that one. You, you have two crazy people. Both of them are locked away when they get summoned to do the, the bidding of this uh, supernatural entity. But in Phantoms, it's not really supernatural. If you guys want to explain how you think the creature in Phantoms uh, does supernatural things, please do. Let me know down there in the doobly -doo. Alright, next up, on page 202 of this paperback version, you have voices from the drain in the sink just before a bunch of gunk explodes out of it. I mean, you can't... I, I'm sorry, that, that to me is not a coincidence. Uh, especially when you have the thing being called It, um, and then you have the voices from the drain, you have the little kids' voices, you know, all that stuff, just before stuff erupts from the drain. Uh, if there are more instances of this happening before It, now, mind you, before It, if there are more instances of this happening in fiction, along with all the other stuff that I found, please let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, my friend Anthony also brought up the fact that Peter Straub's Floating Dragon, which was published before It, also has a lot of stuff that he feels that uh, that King borrowed from. Now, I say borrowed. Um, there, I feel strongly that there's a difference between ripping someone off a tribute, an ode kind of deal, a reboot, and borrowing content. Um, is he ripping off these scenes? I don't think so because they're used in different contexts. And context, what I mean by that is they don't serve the same purpose. For in it, there's it's a scene of character building and terror. In this one, it is just a scene of terror with no context to it. You are getting the the character development with Bev's character in that scene, whereas with this with this scene, it's nothing but a scene of terror that has nothing to do with anything. He's trying to show the I guess the, the powers of the monster. Um, the trapdoor spider analogy, once again, that, that's on page 242 of this one. Um, the trapdoor spider analogy where, you know, it's, it's hiding underground and just waiting to pull people down. Um, and then on page, uh, you have the sewers shape-shifting monster. I mean, we already, we already discussed that. Well, actually, we didn't discuss the shape-shifting. Um, this creature also shape-shifts. So it, it can be anything that it has come across, anything it has eaten. Um, the creature, it... Um, I'm going to call it Pennywise just so we can differentiate between the two. So Pennywise is a shape, shape, shape changer also, um, but with him, the 
it's used to to lure. Well, with both of them, it the uh, the shape shifting is used to lure and bait. So there's another connection with is the shape shifting. I do believe that it is a little more. It is well better used, and you're going to hear this a lot from me. It is better used in Stephen King's It because it has emotional connotations and it has character building connotations whereas in this one it just feels like random things the only time it ever really used a character's uh, fears or wants or needs or anything like that is with the the guy who thought he missed his calling uh, God had called him to be a veterinarian and he didn't become a veterinarian so the thing turned into a dog to lure him um, whereas any other time it was a huge moth it just didn't really make any sense whereas in it Everybody's fears. I mean, you even have a gigantic, the the gigantic bird. You have very weird things, but it has to do specifically with the fears of the characters. Whereas with this one, it's just kind of taking on the forms of the the people and the animals that it has, you know, sucked up. On page 354, they talk about the creature hibernating. Hibernating. It eats for a while, and then disappears for a while, and then it pops up again. There's illusions that there might be more than one. Um, if you've read, okay, uh, well, I guess there's, there's a newer Stephen King book that alludes to the fact that Pennywise is not the only creature like, uh, like him. You know, and all through the Dark Towers, there's mentions of other creatures like Pennywise, and it's just, it's not just Tack could be another, that's another, uh, from, uh, Desperation and Regulators, that, that's another thing, you have all these different creatures, and here it is, uh, supposed that there might be other creatures like this, they are just hidden because, you know, so much of our world is undiscovered, I guess because most of it is covered in water. Uh, I thought that was an interesting connection. Also, you have this creature that, of course, goes and hibernates. Now, you can say that, you know, that, that can be easily written off with going, okay, that just explains why we haven't found one yet, because it only does this every once in a while, and then it goes away. It's the same with, uh, with, with, in Stephen King's It, if he was, if Pennywise was constantly active, something would be said or done, even you know, beyond the scope. He, he would have devoured dairy ages ago. He would have killed everybody. And then he would have had to move on. That's pretty much what happens here. Um, so maybe King read this and was like, I have to do something to change to change that. Um, I, I can't have him devouring the whole town. So let's just go after the kids. I don't know. I'm tossing ideas around. But the but add on the voices in the drain, shape-shifting monster, lives down in the sewers, underground, and it hibernates. So there we have four, I think, four hard connects. Um, on page 267, I found Father Call Callahan. Now, Salem, this is funny. Salem's Lot came before Phantoms. So what happens, what, ha what, what, do, you think, what do you think of, now I know there's, there's loads of Father Callahans, I know. But wouldn't it be funny if Stephen King was reading along and he went, Father Callahan, huh? Uh, all right, I got your ass, I got you. And just, <laughs> just borrowed a whole bunch of stuff to make his book. Uh, okay, on page 272, I hope that it's actually the page where that is the writing. On page 272, it describes writing on a wall in a bathroom. Come on. I mean, it, 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 we got all this other stuff going on. So we have P-R-O, which is, I think is uh, Proteus, I think is the name, the, the underground god or whatever it was. Uh, I can't remember the, the mythology behind that. They actually talked about it in uh, Stranger Things, you know, th uh, this, uh, this last episode, this last season, Stranger Things, the most recent season, Stranger Things 3. Um, they talk about Proteus, I believe. Um, but in this one, I mean, literally, somebody has written on a bathroom wall, in, I think it's iodine in this one, but it's, in it, it is Stanley Uris and his blood after he sliced his wrist. I can't remember, I know there's one, didn't one character kill themselves in this book? They shot themselves in the head after seeing the monster. Uh, there's, there's another thing, the monster being so, e so, so, so alarming that someone has killed themselves just so they don't have to face it. Um, I'm not sure if that was the case in this one. I know it's a husband and a wife that are stuck in the bathroom. I can't remember if they killed themselves or not, but I do know they died in the bathroom. And be, but just before they died, I guess they, I guess it wasn't suicide because the guy was writing it and couldn't finish what he was writing before the monster killed him. So there's another one, y'all. There's another one. Okay, uh, 281. Someone mentioned. Uh, I think Lovecraft is mentioned. 
of course, H.P. Lovecraft is a huge inspiration for just about just about every horror writer out there, especially Stephen King. If you go look at his stuff, um, much of his stuff is also uh, related to Machen. Art Arthur Machen, I think, is the name. Um, the Great God Pan. Uh, the, that that book, that story book, whatever it is, uh, alone inspired King with a lot of his stuff. And I think the the Machen book is much more subtle than even Lovecraft. And I think that's more where Stephen King gets his horror. When he is scary, it's because he's subtle. You know, we're not talking about Wilma Jerzyk and wh whoever on top. You know fighting out in the streets, you know, in uh, Needful Things. We're not talking about scenes like that. We're talking about the very subdued horror that King is good at. Um, and I think he gets that more from Machen, but the topic here is Lovecraft. So there is a lot of Lovecraftian things in this book. Stephen King, of course, you know, he reaches back to Lovecraft. Um, let's see here. On page 320, there's a reference to the blob. I only bring that out. Um, it's just something that I thought was funny because that's pretty much where Dean Koontz got his creature from, was the blob. It is a sentient jelly that just dissolves things. So while I do feel that a lot of the stuff in this book inspired King to write some sections of his uh, uh, over thousand page masterpiece, I do not feel that they're the same book in any way, shape, or form, but I do think that there's pieces that have been taken from this book that he went, that'd be a good idea, I'm going to repurpose that for my stuff and do it better, just as kind of like a kick in the nuts. That's, that's how I feel, um, because, let's be, let's be honest, King did do it better. Uh, let's see here, I already discussed the, uh, okay, I already discussed the supernatural aspect. The final aspect of this, the ending of both It and phantoms has to do with the town actually crumbling and crack the roads cracking everything coming apart like there's an earthquake while these creatures are dying um so it, it there's way too many allusions to phantoms in it that i feel that it's more than just coincidence which one do i prefer even though both books are fantastic, I believe Stephen King's It is a masterpiece. Have you read Phantoms? Have you read It? I hope so. If not, then I, I just spoiled loads of great stuff for you from both books. But uh, let me know how much do you think I got right? Do you think I'm on the nose? Are you like Dealey and you think, um, do you, do you think that I just completely missed the mark and all of this is just crazy coincidence. Let me know down there in the doobly-doo, but until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another Stephen King video. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!